those earlier, and he said it had been over 20 years since the uh, uh, Macon County Republican Party had met in Highland. So uh, Chris and I are excited to get that started again. And I hope we get it continue and keep, keep it going. Thank you. Um, I'm going to introduce our guest speaker uh, today. Uh, my wife and I had the pleasure, and this is my wife Allison, by the way, sitting in front, and she, she was helping out with all the table decorations, and without her, then this day probably wouldn't have happened. <laughs> But we were picking uh, Mike's brain at a dinner one night about how to uh, uh, improve our party here locally. And we were talking about guest speakers and several other issues. And then it, it hit Alice and I, but probably the best person to come speak about it would be Mike himself. So uh, I had first uh, met Mike via his wife. She had hired me uh, to rejuvenate their landscape at a recently purchased home here in Highlands. And, a little did she know how much mischief that Mike and I could actually get into. Uh, Mike and I kind of fit together like peas and carrots, so to speak. Uh, my first impressions of Mike were that he was a very humble, always smiling, always laughing and loving life. Uh, after several glasses of wine in both of us, I learned a lot more about him. I just learned how impressive Mike Hightower actually is. He is the quintessential public servant. I just thought about that I stayed busy with local organizations. Mike is a true role model that we could all learn from. He is and will always continue to be a very important mentor for me. Uh, I have placed a biography of Mike on each one of these tables. I hope you all take the time to look at it. Um, I'm just gonna touch on a few of the achievements that really struck me as being important and you can look at some of his others. Uh, Mike, please correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, he has been the past chairman uh, the Jacksonville Chamber of Commerce. That doesn't sound like much, but that's the second largest in the United States. Uh, he's been the past chairman for the Board of Visitors, the Board of Trustees for the U.S. Naval Academy, and he has helped chair over 461, excuse me, he has chaired, not over, he has chaired 461 individuals as successful political candidates. Uh, and this one blew me away. He is actually credited with helping to raise over $100 million for various campaigns. And to boot all this, he holds down a full-time job with Blue Cross Blue Shield. Mike, I, I really don't see how in the world you have had time to do all the things on your biography, but I'm truly amazed and we're just grateful and thankful that you're able to be here today uh, and give us some of your thoughts on how to improve our local GOP. So come on up. <laughs> Jimmy, uh, and thank you for having me up here. Um, the comment about him and I getting into mischief, um, my wife is uh, kind of upset when we bought this house when he said renovate our front yard. It really was a disaster area. And uh, then what happened was we had this extra property, had a piece of a stream running through it, and I said, I've always wanted a trout pond. And so finally, we sort of, in three years later, uh, now we have uh, five waterfalls and a number of other things. And finally, my wife said, all right, I, you and Jimmy have had enough fun. I want a new kitchen and new bathrooms. So, this year, so anyway, that's, uh, Jimmy didn't get much done this year at the pond because Sue called in her chip and said, no more. You and Jimmy are not allowed to talk this year. So, uh, but anyway, thank you for, for having me up here. Um, I am more than excited about being up here. Uh, my wife has introduced me to Highlands 15 years ago. I was talking to them, they, he was mayor then, John Cleveland, and we were looking for a small place. She was born from North Carolina. Uh, I came up, that's all I ever heard about the time. We've been married 44 years, that's all I've ever heard about is North Carolina, North Carolina. As she said, God created North Carolina and then whatever was left was the rest of the United States. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, being from Chicago and then moving to Jacksonville there, uh, I sort of took it lightly. Um, and then I came up here and I absolutely have fallen in love with North Carolina and Highland. And now I understand how she gets there, and I understand why there are so many of us who have come from all over the country, and why there are so many of us that now have come up here to North Carolina. You have an extraordinary, an extraordinary state. We thought in, we thought in Jacksonville we understood, and we thought we preached hospitality. I will tell you the folks at Macon County, you, you have brought a new level to hospitality in the way that you do it. You, uh, as, as uh, many of you already know, um, 
There's about 1,500 or 1,200 of you that stay up here in Highlands most of the year. And then come about May, about 20,000 of us come up here. And you have to deal with this. Well, in a couple of years, be one's going to, another one's going to come up here and we'll be full time. But thank you for your hospitality and thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing for this party. Uh, I too was struck when I heard Ethan and Austin spoke today and, and that. And uh, uh, you all have got a great state senator, you've got a house member here, you've got a great sheriff, you've got some county commissioners. You already know how to elect Republicans. I'm just going to share a couple insights um, that you'll probably be good at math. This is my 43rd year of uh, doing politics. I love it. Um, closure, disclosure, more discovery. Uh, back when I first got started, Northeast Florida was very conservative and there was only one party, it was the D. Somehow that fell off the radar and that's how I got over to the R's. But uh, there were a lot of us who grew up uh, back then that the D's were conservative. I don't know what the devil would happen. I, they, they just, the wheels came off the train. So I just picked up a better train. But um, one of the things that I have been blessed with is over the years is to have a group of mentors. Have a group of mentors that have helped me and like many of you who are very successful, I have no doubt that they've said to you what they said to me. I will help you along the way as long as in return that you will find someone else to help along the way. And that is how it works. And when we hear these two fine young men talk and we understand what next year is all about, uh, I'm going to be 67. Uh, thank God that because of a great wife, great family, great company, I'm going to be okay for the next couple of years. I'm going to be all right. But if we don't make a change, it's not going to be okay for them. And that's really what this election is all about. It's about a future, and it's about getting back to those principles, those core principles that allow each of us in the room to be able to pass on something, not only just inheritance, but be able to pass on a quality of life and a vision that we could say to our young people, if you work hard, and you do it, and you play by the rules, you're gonna have something to pass on. But this country made a huge error. And we gotta get rid of that error. And I don't mean that E-R-A, I think it's E-R-R-O-R. -R. It was a bad error. And we need to take, we need to do something about that. And so what I thought I'd do is just kind of share with you some, of, some observations. You obviously have a great party here, and I'll just tell you, I had the opportunity to be chairman, uh, uh, Chris, for, for Northeast Florida uh, for 46 months. Um, and I've had a couple of glasses of wine that have been there 47. They would have Baker acted me, but I, it was great for 46 months. And uh, having been, the, having had the opportunity to do that during the best of times, I had Jeb Bush as my governor, I had George W. as my president, and John Payton as the mayor who I was his campaign manager. So when you got that kind of, you got this kind of a lineup in Northeast Florida, you know, you, you, even I can't pull the wheels off the train. But it was an interesting 46 months. And uh, during that time, thanks to people like her in this room, um, I took over a party that was already working. But uh, I, I came in with basically three goals. And like every, every in our party is no different than anybody else, and it's probably no different from here. Um, we have a unique tent of a lot of different conservative Republicans in our tent. And when you have strong personalities, strong conservative businessmen and businesswomen, and people who have been raised with that kind of individual, you have a lot of <clears throat> egos. And uh, sometimes they clash, and that's what makes our party great. Well, no, I'm not one of those A-style people, of course. Um, I, um, so I just sort of came in with the rules for mine. And I said, we're only going to do three things during the time I'm going to be chairman. Raise money, grow the party, and elect Republicans. And unless we're going to talk about that at our meeting, we're not going to talk about anything else. Because we're going to ask you for that commitment because that's what Republicans do and we're going to focus. And so during that time, we raised, we grew our party by 26,000, and thanks to a lot of good folks that I was able to, who still return my phone calls, 1.3 million, and we had eight back-to-back -back elections in Northeast Florida. So when I turned over the gavel to somebody else, um, 
there were a lot of folks that were really happy about that, but probably nobody better than my wife since I had not seen her most of the time for that 46 months. What I'm really going to talk about and I, and, uh, is, that, is what I've said, and I do this in Florida, and I'm doing this for our state Republican women who are just extraordinary women, is I, I would sort of look at what we're doing is that um, politics is, the business of politics is business. And, and, I, and to me, it's, it's real simple. It's not fun. It's hard work. It's tough. And you gotta get your, your you gotta get your hands dirty. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, there's no difference in running successful politics is running a successful business. And we have to look at politics that that way. And so that was that was what I was gonna start from and, and, and try to just give you some observations from a Florida perspective and where you all are. And this is just perspective. Uh, as I told Jimmy, I don't give advice, I make observations, because my wife says, I never take advice. And she says, I never listen to her. Of course, none of you men have that problem. Um, but, so I was gonna talk about how I was gonna talk about, because we in Florida think we're up against a whole lot. And so when I talk to your supervisor or your board of elections in, in um, Franklin, and there was a very nice lady, um, I think her name was Hill, and so I asked her for what was up on your ballot uh, with reapportionment. And I realized that you all did not lose, thank goodness you didn't lose a congressional member, but you didn't pick up any. So, both, so with reapportionment, with your 50 senators and your 120 House members, because of your population, it doesn't move too much, so your lines will stay. In Florida, we pick up two, two more congressional members, um, so we have to totally re restructure the whole state. And then when I went over and saw what your 2012 ballot looks like, oh my goodness. Um, presidential, 13 congressional, governor, lieutenant governor, attorney general, auditor, commissioner of agriculture, commissioner of insurance, commissioner of labor, secretary of state, superintendent of public instruction, treasurer, all 50 state, all 50 state senate, all 100 house members, supreme court, associate justice, Court of Appeals, District Court of Appeals, School Board, Soil and Water Conservation. I really don't know what Chris and Jimmy are going to be doing in their spare time uh, for the rest of this next year. And, and what struck me was one of how important of what you're doing today and what you're going to be doing for the next 14 or 15 months when you look at these two young folks. You all have got heavy lifting. And what I'd like to do is to share with a couple observations with you, and I'm happy, and then at the end, I'll get to where I think I am. Because I'm not going to suggest that you all do something if I, my Kaito, or don't help to do that. So it's kind of like there's going to be elections, each of you who are precinct committee men and committee women. Um, you're leaders. Uh, you have a number of excellent elected officials who you were introduced. But if you are a committee man and a committee woman and you're in charge of a precinct, let me tell you, and if, it, let me, if you haven't heard it, let me first to tell you, you become the political leader in your precinct. How many times do people call, especially when you're going to get this ballot, and they're going to say, what do I do? They will look to you, which makes you a, a political leader. And with that leadership comes accountability and responsibility. You can't get away with it. And thank you for doing it. Because that's what politics is all about. It's about leadership, and it's about accountability, and it's about responsibility. Uh, in, in dealing with the lady uh, at your supervisor or the Board of Edu uh, Elections, I saw the way that it's broken down in, I think, your 15 precincts. Very unique. And I think this really goes to, I think, an advantage that you all have that's different from us in Florida. Um, one, in this county, thank goodness, there are more Republicans than Democrats. Uh, but more interesting is you have this unaffiliated party. Now, what I've figured out, and everybody's tried to explain this to me, that there is a group of people in this county who, for many different reasons, have decided to be unaffiliated. Well, politics is really about, one, going to your base, which is your registered Republicans. And then it's building a coalition. 
according to this hand, the, the handout that, that, that I shared, there are 6474 unaffiliated in this county and 8608 Republicans. You combine the two of those, that puts you someplace close to almost 15,000 against 8,000 Democrats. Now, I'll take those odds any day of the week. And I think that shows where the, the, where the opportunity of this great party is, is building on what we need to be doing in 2012. You know what your base is, and that's at 8,000, 8608. And Lord knows, we do not need to come up with a new slogan or a new message for 2012. Not only for the unaffiliated, but for the Democrat. All we have to do is ask every registered voter in Macon County or Duval County in Jacksonville one question. Are you better off now today than you were four years ago? Exactly. One question. That's all. And if we don't do anything but understand that is the question, are you better off today? Is your family better off? Is your business better off? Is your neighbor better off? Are your children's future better off? This is not rocket science, ladies and gentlemen. It's there. And that is what we have going into 2012. Yes, our party, we are, we have, at least in Duval County, we have it down to a fine art. We can find fault, which, who is more Republican, who's more conservative. I go, I hear this all the time. But here's what I tell my, my Republican friends. In Duval, unfortunately, there were more D's than R. But we didn't go for Obama in Jacksonville for a long time. We haven't gone for D in a long time. And I say, it doesn't matter how conservative you are, is because there's more of them than us. I need you next to me. We cannot govern, we cannot set good public policy if we don't build a coalition and have governance on our side. Because you can be right, but you can be dead right if you don't build a coalition, if you don't win. Ask your senator, ask your house member, ask your county commission. You can't do those things for your community or for your district if you're not in the seat. And that's one of the things that we need to understand is that we are a party that is trying to get back. We've made some huge mistakes. There's enough blame to go around. But if we don't come together and forget how we, what broke us up and more focus on how do we get back in place, we'll worry about all the stuff that we could have, uh, could have done better later. But there's an old political adage that many of you already know. Woulda, coulda, shoulda will never get you to where you want to be. Woulda, coulda, shoulda is not going to get us back to the White House. What we got to do is have a focus, have a message, but more than that, we got to come together. And when I see that you've got 6,474 unaffiliated folks out there, we just need to go talk to them about that message. Now, I know one of them because he's my neighbor, Tony Potts. So I'm gonna take Tony and I'm gonna work him for you. <laughs> and when, when, and when, see the neat thing is that when our road freezes over, he's gotta park his car in my parking lot. So I'll take Tony for you. I'll, I'll work this on, on this unaffiliated on this one. Talking about leadership in the, in the handout again. This is not rocket science. This is stuff that we do every day. We, we do it in our churches. We do it in our business. Uh, we do it at Rotary, we do it all that. But when you are working for a campaign, if, if you are working in a, in, in, as, a, as a candidate or the campaign, precinct committee person, it doesn't matter. These all fall the same way. There's just some things that, we, that come become the obvious. And the reason I raise this is that sometimes in the heat of battle we forget what our roles and responsibilities and our jobs are. Not to preach, this is just something that I share with my folks down in Jacksonville all the time. Um, and I, I think your, your, your elected officials will tell you this. It's always and all about the voter. It's about the voter. If they don't, we don't find a way to get them to the polling place, we lose. They don't get elected. The candidate doesn't get elected, and all that you do isn't. It's always about 
the voter. It is not about us. It is the responsibility of the candidate and the campaign to connect with the voter, not the other way around. We as precinct committee men and committee women who work for the party, who are there doing every day, we have to do and use those skills and that out of our toolkit to get them to understand is we need you to go to the polls to help us help you. But we have to connect with that voter. Do not expect that voter to come to us. And we need to work that 24-7. And when you're doing that, and, I, and, I, and I, I put this in here, this next one in here to remind myself that sometimes, though I, my wife does say sometimes I get a little bit focused and forget about what I'm doing and how I'm doing about it, is that those of us who are running campaigns, those of us who are running for office, or those of us who are precinct committee men and committee women, when we're trying to build our party, people will forget what you say, they will forget what you did, they'll never forget how you made them feel. I'm going to read it again. They'll forget what you'll say, not what you said. They'll forget all that you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. And it is really important as we build our teams that remember, people who work in campaigns do it for a love of something. A love of life, a love of a better something, something for their kids. It's volunteers. And they look to us, and though in the stress of a campaign or the stress of trying to win, we just need to remember is what brings them back is how you made them feel a part of a team. Because it's really important. That's what brings them back to campaigns. People get involved. Each of you have gotten involved in politics for something. And I'll lay odds that you've probably run against, run up against either a campaign manager, Lord knows, hope it wasn't a candidate because it wasn't probably a successful candidate, or people who were involved, and you went, what a jerk. You know, I'm just trying to help out. And, you know, I don't need, I don't need this. I've got all this other. We need to remember to do that because those of us who are building political parties, when we're building our county meetings, when we're trying to build our local set, is that we're also building for the future. And how we do it, and how we treat each other, and how we treat those people who come into the campaign, or come into our headquarters, or when we're working with them, they, you become the face and the heart and the soul for that campaign, for that candidate, for our party. And um, we need your passion. Just remember, people will remember how, they, how you made them feel. And how you made them feel, trust me, they will always come back. And if you really make them feel good, to bring somebody back with them. The other part, and I think uh, uh, Chairman Chris Murray knows this, I think our county, all, all everybody who's a leadership will remember this. Leadership is not about popularity. We've already had one president who only talked after he saw a poll. Um, that really helped him a lot, a lot. Um, you know, sometimes you have to make tough decisions. That's what leadership is all about. It's not about popularity. It's about doing what's right for the right reason. Because leadership, you are, you are held accountable, not for how people liked you, but for the results. And sometimes you gotta balance that out. And when you're dealing with volunteers, Chairman Murray, it was every day. Every day I balanced it out. I knew, you know, I kept saying, well, it is about me. If I lose this election, they're gonna think I wasn't a good I wasn't a good chairman, or I didn't do what I should have done. On the other hand, if I didn't do it right, I wouldn't have anybody back there to be pushing it. So it's, there's always that balance between getting results, it's not so much being popular, but in being inclusive. Uh, and there is, there's a lot of textbooks about leadership, and it's great, but the important thing is you gotta put it to practice, and that's what that's what differentiates people who want to be leaders and those people who become leaders, is that there's that balance. But at the end of the day, we look to our leaders to get the results, whether it's state senator, uh, county commissioner, house member, chairman of the party. We look to them to get results. Know that that's heavy lifting. Uh, they need your help, but I'll lay odds. They've also probably said, let me know when the wheels are coming off the track. And they need that feedback at all times. For 2012, the objectives, 
as we get started, we build this great party both here in Macon County and what we're doing in Duval County. These are objectives. This isn't, you know, this thing came out of my high tower. Uh, any of us who've been doing this, we just we just cherry pick and cannibalize other people what they say. So I did the same thing with some folks that I've been working with for 43 years. So I did not think of this by myself, trust me. Um, but it's small words, so I got it. Um, first, first and foremost, say thank you. And I heard that coming in here. You're building a party, and we're getting ready for 2012. Say thank you. You'd be surprised. How many times people forget to do it? It is extraordinary. And you'd be surprised when people forget to do it in business. Well, they're not in business very long, but when we're building, we're talking about a party. Those of us who are involved in the party and somebody comes in the door, say thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for what they did. If they didn't do anything but help come over and, I don't know, make phone calls, put up one sign, bring one, you know, pan of chocolate chip cookies, uh, whatever it is, say thank you. Work hard. It's hard work. We all know it. We have jobs. We have families. We have commitments. We are caught in an we are caught in an economy that we really are. We're scared. I will tell you, at almost 67, having been very, very had a lot of people to help me get where I, was, I am terrified of what. What I'm going to hear during the day on the news flash of what is happening on Wall Street or what is happening in Beijing or something else. Because we no longer rely just on Wall Street. What we do in this country or what happens in another country is going to impact what happens the next day. We live in such a global thing. So anybody says I'm not worried about the economy, trust me, they're scared. We're all scared about this thing. But we're going to have to work hard and we're going to have to find time with all that what we're doing, those which are our priorities, our kids, our family, our business, our loved ones, those things we have to do. It. The politics and working in campaigns is hard work. And um, we gotta find a way to make it hard, but we gotta we gotta find a way to have fun. I do it with red wine, other people find other ways. But I you know, whatever gets you there and keeps a smile on your face, that's what you do. Second, no silly mistakes. Now, I will tell you, the elected officials in this room will tell you they live in fear during that campaign that they or their campaign worker will make no silly mistake. That's right. Correct? You can do all these neat things, have raised a ton of money, done this, and you will say or somebody will do something and you go, that was just about as dumb as rocks. And then you just, and then you spend X number of dollars, sweat equity, or sanity figuring to put the wheels back on the train. So in a campaign, whether you're working in a campaign, or you're the candidate, or the campaign manager, and yes, Mr. Murray, no silly mistakes. Will they happen? Absolutely, because you're dealing with human beings, and we are masterful at doing it. Ask our kids. Adults really do silly things. And so we have to we have to just work to make sure we don't do silly mistakes. Stay focused. You would be surprised that people will forget what was the reason they came into the headquarters for. What was the reason am I working for this candidate? You know, it's not about you, it's when you walk in the door. What am I supposed to be doing? That's where it's up to Jimmy and Chris to say, all right, you're coming in today. This is our goal, this is our responsibility. I like to say, because of my Jaguars, what are we gonna to do to move the ball down the field closer to, to the goalpost? So we gotta stay focused, and that's where the leadership comes in. Keep your, lead, keep your volunteers focused on what they're supposed to do. Let them know what their accountability is, and when they're reaching it and they're doing it, tell them thank you, and they'll keep pushing that ball. Stay on message. That's really for your leadership. Lord knows your candidates do that. Of course, none of your elected officials ever have, have any of their campaign workers that ever worry about keeping their boss on message. Um, it is, there's something about an elected official, probably not in North Carolina, it's just Florida. There's something about an elected official in an open mic. It is, just doesn't work. Um, <laughs> it is a train wreck ready to happen. And I don't know why, it's a, it's a, a gene defect. It's probably just in Florida. But anyway, stay on message. Just stay on message. 
Um, and even that, when you're in, a, in when you're working in a campaign and you're in the headquarters, ladies and gentlemen, you could be the greatest volunteer, but the message is about what the candidate or what we're doing. Don't don't become a cowboy and come up with your own message. They they we got people within the campaign. Let them be the messenger. That's what they get paid for. And if they make silly mistakes, you went on your went on your dance card. Time is your ally. Use it wisely. How many how many weeks and months before the 2012 election? How many people? What's the answer? 14 months. Okay. How many days is that? 30 times that. Uh, how many working days is that? Not enough. <laughs> Not enough. We're already behind. We're already behind. Chris, Jimmy, we're already behind. When you go back to this ballot, and if you have it on the pass up, you've got elected officials that are going to be on this ballot. They're going to be wanting your time, your energy, your money. But when you look at the ballot in North Carolina, that's extraordinary. There is enough time to go around. We're going to, y'all are going to have to decide where you want to be focused, where you want to stay with, and what we got to do. And we got to do that. And we're going to have to run because never forget. And unfortunately, as it was brought out, the present administration doesn't worry about money because they're using ours. See, they don't have to go out and raise it. All they got to do is write the check. And if you don't believe that all the stuff that's being out there for economic and it is not going to end up being street money, let me tell you how it works. All this stuff that's coming back for incentives is going to be street money. And y'all probably don't have a lot of street money up here. Trust me, in Florida we do. I can tell you about the 2012 when I was in charge of the Bush campaign in, 20, in 2000. Um, lots of street money. The power of the incumbent is extraordinary. This incumbent has already stated he's going to spend $1 billion. If he can't raise it, it's going to be your money. We're going to have to get focused. We're going to have to stay on message, and we're going to have to work hard. If they win, they have set the agenda for Austin and Ethan. We cannot allow that to happen. And they will spend whatever it takes. They will do whatever it takes. Remember, Republicans play by the rules. The other side plays to win. They don't have to worry about anything else. They just want to win at any cost. We got to find a balance. We should always do, should always play by the rules. That's what we need to do. But folks, we're going to have to get down, we're going to have to get tough, and we're going to have to do it. Because it's all about this next generation. We cannot afford another four years. One of the things that I tell everybody, and I tell this to my folks in Jacksonville, because we have, when I was chairman, we had one party, I had four Republican women clubs and 11 different Republican clubs. Now, if you don't think that was trying to keep your hands around the ball, um, because they, all of them were the best, and they would always remind me that they were the best, and who did dad like best? So it was like, and of course, I know you all don't have that problem up here, uh, Chris, but anyway, um, I would just suggest to you, successful politics is the art of addition not subtraction. Let me say it again. Successful politics is the art of addition, not subtraction. There are 8,400 of you, and how many How many Tony Potts are there? Uh, I'm going to tell you, I'll get him for you. Uh, there are 6474. Now, make that tent. Make this tent between, 20, 20, between now and 25. Make it as big as you can. Make them feel welcome. All you got to do is ask them one question. Are you better off now than you were? Hurt? We're for it. That's all you got to do. And if you have to, get them, put them in your truck, take them to the polls. That's what we do. Take them to the polls. It works out. My last poll is, and, I, and this is just because um, I, love, I love raising money. I, I really do. Um, and uh, my wife, it, gets really upset with me, and when she finds out what I'm going to do, she's really going to be upset. She said, and this is what happens. Um, 
I have just been very blessed to put together a group of folks that are like-minded. And for some other reason, you know, it is when I call for a candidate or I call for a charity or I call for a, for my party, you know, they're there. And my wife is always saying, Mike, we're never going to have any friends. I just was the view father. They're upset with me. They, they, you're, you're always asking mine. I said, Sue, we never had friends to begin with. Don't worry about it. You lose. <laughs> so don't have well, let me tell you the, the thing. If you go back and ask people who are successful fundraisers, I will tell you, I speak from experience, a successful fundraiser had terrible dating records in high school. They got, to the, they got used to the word no. Don't worry about it. Dial to the next number. It's okay. All you got to do, all you're looking for is one strike. That's all you're looking for, right? So just don't worry about it. And when you get that one, you know, if you're lucky, you get it on the second call, it may be the 15th call. I mean, you know, you got to just keep on dialing. Um, I say this, and I think this becomes it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're right, they're wrong. If Jimmy and Chris are going to do what we expect them to do, they've got to have the resources. You're, you're talking about pass the bucket or all those kinds of things. I, I'm going to give you a suggestion. This is what I told, told uh, Jimmy. There are about 20,000 of us from all, all over this country that come to this wonderful county every year. We find a way to get up that mountain, and we come up here, and trust me, we don't dress like this. This is why we come up here, so we don't have to do this. And we come up here so to enjoy your hospitality, your great barbecue, that's a hint, Jimmy. I love this barbecue. Um, it's how you make us feel when we come to North Carolina. And yes, a lot of us who come up this mountain, or we go to Franklin because, and, and we, have some, we have a number of friends. I have two friends who live in who work at, who live in Jackson work at Blue Cross that are homes outside Franklin. I can't get them to come up here. You know why? They say where their little spot is, they can walk out either their back door or their front door, and they see those beautiful mountains. And they go, Why do I want to go up the mountain? I go off my porch and I see the mountain. That's why I'm there. And then you go to Scaly. I mean, you know, the, the tubing, the snow, all that. I mean, Nanahala. You all have the best of all of it. Suggestion. Suggestion. You've already, you've already what I heard this first time in 20 years, Franklin came up here. Thank you for doing that. Suggestion. Put together something sometime June, July, or August next year. Franklin, up here, I don't care. But you've got 20,000 of us. And the vast majority, I will bet you, the vast majority of those who come to this wonderful county in the summer are Republicans. Now, tell you why this is good. Number one is, those of us who should be home getting ready for the election, we're finding a really good, we're finding some excuse to come up here and spend two or three months up here in your great weather and your hospitality. And we're getting banged and pinged back there saying, we're back here, what are you doing up there enjoying life? Suggestion. Give us, give us something to go to. Something with barbecue. In Franklin, here, I don't care. Yeah, the red wine, it's great. Good cold beer is great too. Oh, that's a separate issue. Uh, but find a reason that during next summer, as we get ready for that primary and we get ready, that rev up our engine so we go out here and we're saying, man, Macon County's got it and they're doing it. One, it takes all the guilt when I go home and I hear that you guys were up there partying and you hadn't done anything for the party and I will hear that. So find a reason, Jimmy, uh, Chris, and y'all. Come up with a reason. Doesn't have to be big, no ties, barbecue, work it out. And I will tell you, and there are, I heard one of the clubs are at, uh, at the country club, uh, Wildcat. We know some folks here. I mean, find something for a reason for us to come together. And trust me, you know what the, t the topic will be? It's going to be the 2012 election. We already know what the theme is. It's going home and getting to that suggestion to you. The other thing is that, as I said, is that uh, that will kind of help us, those of us up here. We come up here, ask us. And that's one of the things you'd be surprised, is that there are a lot of good folks that come up here and we hang out together and we, we talk and all that. But we are as concerned about what's happening in Washington as you are. So I think there's a huge opportunity. 
as you all kind of think about where you're going to go and what, how, what you're going to do next summer before that election. Um, think about those of us that come up here. And I will tell you, if you put the word out and you want to say all good Republicans come to a good barbecue, um, you know, I, I'll lay odds we can do that. And the other thing I would suggest to you is a lot of us and a, a, a number of you businessmen and businesswomen know these people, know us that come up here. And like myself, they have been very blessed and very fortunate in knowing folks. Ask them about having a speaker. So you do better than me. You got all these folks that are coming from all over the country. Ask them for a speaker. Trust me, I'll lay odds they've got a good elected official or, or someone that comes up and enjoys this hospitality for a weekend. So ask them that you know that you're from, whether it be Louisiana, Florida, Georgia, wherever you want to be. You know, you're going to come up here. If you got a good Republican, you know, would you like to bring them up here? Because that's what we got to do, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll finish with this. We've got to come together because it really is about Ethan. It really is about Austin. We cannot take our eye off the ball. I think it's ours, in spite of the billion dollars. I just honestly believe in my gut that we will stay focused, stay on message, work together, bring a group together. There's no question in my mind. I just do not believe that this country has done as much as it's done this long for so many that we're going to allow this to happen. I believe we can do this. So. To let you know that I'm going to do this, I will just tell you, Chris, Jimmy, I'm going to give you a check for $500 to help you plan that event. And if you have it, I'll match it next year. Here's my $500. Wow. So, thank you all for having me up here. Um, and. Uh, I'll give Jimmy, uh, now that Sue's got her kitchen, her bathrooms, Jimmy and I can go back and play in my pond. Thank you again. <laughs>